everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock to your studio and today is the speed version of the Art Joy of Sharing live stream show. You can still go over and watch that one in real time if you don't like to watch speeded up videos and you'd rather see it in actual recorded real time. This is a wooden canvas that I'm going to do with collage and mixed media and it is inspired by the August mood board. We have a monthly mood board over in the Art Joy of Sharing Art community on Facebook that we post each at the beginning of each month. And so I was looking at the mood board and I was inspired by the stacked things and I was inspired by the colors. And then also this month we're having Art Joy of Sharing Abstract August. And so I picked a prompt from that sheet as well, which is hexagon. So the first thing I did, this, this is a wooden canvas that's been gessoed. And the first thing I did was to use some DecoArt Media Antiquing Cream. Um, this is a, a red iron oxide type color. I put that all over it, let it dry, you know, very briefly, and then wiped it back with a baby wipe. And I'm setting that aside to dry for later because I want to make some papers inspired by that rusty, um, uh, grungy looking that um, in the mood board, those those uh, barrels that are stacked one on top of each other. That that was like the first photo I found for the mood board this month. And I just thought it was so cool. <coughs> I liked the way the colors blended together. I liked the pattern of them stacked. And I just, I thought it was interesting. So I wanted to make some papers that kind of looked like that. And so of course I got out my uh, gel plate because what better way? I started out trying some acrylic inks first because I had some really cool colors like an olive and a rust uh, colors in the ink and of course it beat it up and I didn't feel like getting out anything to um, you know make it smooth out so I decided to just switch to the DecoArt Media Fluid acrylic paints and I have a lot of those in interesting earthy colors I've got um, siennas and ochre and uh, then, of course, some, some greens and olives and even a little bit of turquoise or teal colors because things that are made out of copper, um, of course, they get that patina that's kind of a teal green, verdigris color. So I switched to those. I'm mixing multiple colors on the plate. This is a fluid paint. It's, um, it's not a heavy body paint like I normally use. And so I'm, I just use my two-inch brayer to mix up the colors, adding a few different colors of these, these same tones that are in those barrels in the photo on the mood board. So I've got green gold, I've got cobalt teal, I've got some uh, raw sienna, burnt sienna, those type of colors. And I'm just blending them up. Then I'm using different tools to make marks to make it more interesting. That one is a piece of styrofoam tray that's got the tops of uh, water bottles glued to it. It's a really interesting mark making tool. It makes little circles, which a lot look a lot like those barrels. And so that one is that piece is a piece of coffee dyed paper. And we were talking in the chat if there's text weight paper that is off-white, and I'm sure there is. I'm absolutely sure there is. I just don't happen to have any, but I did have a few of these coffee or tea stained papers that someone had sent me. I also have white paper, and then I have black text weight papers. And um, those are the papers that I'm using to print. I, I don't want to use a heavy paper like a cardstock. I do have some craft-colored cardstock, but I like to... Um, to collage with light paper and actually sitting right next to me there is that craft colored deli paper. I don't know. I didn't print on that. It just now really occurred to me that I could have printed on that deli paper. I was just using it as a uh, um, roll off paper, but that would have been exactly what I was talking about because the white paper just got a lot of white, right? It's very white and light and I was looking for more earthy tones. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sometimes I amaze myself with my <sighs> lack of thought. Anyway, I do have that roll-off paper that I could have used as well. Um, now I'm mark making with a piece of textured wallpaper. That's an interesting mark making tool on a gel plate. 
And for this one, which was some rusty uh, iron oxide and um, maybe raw sienna, quinacridone gold, those type of colors, uh, I picked it up with Naples yellow, which is a really cool, what I consider neutral color. It's an interesting yellow color. And it picked up some of the <clears throat> some of the turquoise that was already on the plate that was left over from the previous plant print. Man, that print is beautiful. I love it. I just love that print. That is the best one, I think. So this one I was talking about, it's too white. So I decided to use a transparent iron oxide paint to do a glazing over the top to take away a lot of that white. And it becomes a lot better for my what I needed uh, when it's that color instead of got the white background. So that's what you can do if things are too white. So then I was looking at the pieces that I'd made. I'm like, do I have enough? You know, it's hard to stop gel printing. And I only have an hour and a half on the show. <laughs> That's all the all that we do. So uh, I'm like, okay, one more, one more. And I got out these stencil guts, which are the things that, that are the waste from stencils when you cut them out with a laser cutter. Uh, you get these excess pieces, and they're fun to gel print with. And so I had this, this sack of them. And I decided to just throw some of those on the plate to make interesting patterns. They're all different stuff. You don't even know what you're going to get. They're all different stuff. And I think these are from um, What If NC, uh, Carla's shop. She makes stencils. And just judging by the weight of the, the, the plastic, I think that's where they're from. Peg sent them to me. Uh, Stencil Girl products also sell stencil guts. So they just, you know, you know, don't know what you're going to get. It's just random. So I put some greens on the plate and then a little bit of uh, raw sienna, yellowy color, and I made my first print and then I picked up the second print with copper. Because why not? Copper. <laughs> copper is beautiful. And this, this print turned out really pretty too. It's on the black paper with the copper pickup and then it's got those tones of green throughout. And so that's a really pretty one too. Pretty, very pretty. And then the one, one last thing that I did was to take this this greenish one that's it's just again too bright, and I used some quinacridone gold to glaze it and um, made it a better color for what we were doing today. So that's all the printing. I know you guys like to watch me print for hours, but um, that was all I did. The next thing I'm doing is, uh, I remember I told you that the prompt I picked from the hashtag Art Joy Sharing Abstract August is hexagon. And this morning I was looking all around for hexagons. Um, I found that one stencil that I did use, which is I think a deco art stencil that had hexagons, but then I wanted to cut them out. I didn't have any punches. I didn't want to die cut. And then I looked, was looking in my drawer and I found this old tool which is called a colossal. And I originally got this years ago when I wanted to do scrapbooking, but I did not want, I did not own, nor did I want to purchase a die cutting machine because they were expensive and heavy. And this has a little swivel knife that comes with the original set. And then these little templates, and this is, this is like a nested template that has hexagons stacked, stacked one on top of the other. This was perfect for what I needed, <laughs> perfect. So I took the papers that I had printed, plus before the show I had cut some others out that were um, antique colored paper and text paper and uh, even some handmade paper. And um, I'd already cut those in advance and then I cut some more out during the show. So there's a little tab that's holding all the hexes together because if they were cut all the way through, they would just fall out, right? So I use the swivel knife to cut in the two channels and then I use an X-Acto knife to just pop those two little tabs. And super easy, super fun. I hope that I can find that tool and that it still exists because it is an absolutely great economical choice if you don't have a die cutting machine and uh, you don't want to buy one like that's how I was. Now I own a die cutting machine. In fact, I own two. But um, at the time, I didn't. And I think this is really a fun option for cutting shapes. And I have all kinds of shapes, little templates 
that I purchased at different times. I have tons of them. So I get to play with that tool some more. And I really will try to look for a link on Amazon to it because I'm sure they're still making it, right? Maybe not. It's possible that it got outmoded by the die cutting machine that everyone owns. So now I've got my wooden canvas back. I've got some Liquitex matte gel medium and I am collaging all these fun little hexagons that I cut out of the different gel printed paper and text paper and handmade paper and uh, coffee stained papers, all these that are in the same types of colors that you see on the mood board. Cutting them out, I'd cut them all out and I'm now just collaging them on there using my distressed collage brush and the gel medium. Uh, I think the gel medium is best for this. I go, I, I spritz the back of the paper to make it more pliable. I put some gel medium on, on and then I stick it down and put gel medium over the top to just make sure everything is really sealed down. This will be eventually spray sealed the entire thing. Once it gets completely dry, I will take it outside and spray it, um, you know, for permanence. And then, I don't know, I'll either sell it or give it to someone or hang it on the wall. One of those things, I don't know yet. I like it. I think it would be fun on the wall. I just am not sure where exactly I would put it. So if you're interested in purchasing it, you can uh, direct a message me on Facebook or uh, email me at, on my email address that's linked below the video. So yeah, I, I am going for abstract here because it is supposed to be abstract art. So I do want to make it not just bam, 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 all the same size, all lined up perfectly. I want some to overlap the others. I want all the different interesting colors. And even the, there's one that's like a, a coffee or tea stained um, paper towel, kitchen towel that has these interesting ridges. And I just put that one on, I was worried that when I put it down, it was gonna lose its ridges, but it didn't. I was careful. And so it has an interesting kind of visual texture. I mean, it doesn't, I guess you can kind of feel it when you run your hand over it, but um, I, I put a lot of gel medium on there to make sure that it was, you know, protected. Kitchen towel, paper, paper towel is not a very sturdy type of paper, so. So I'm overlapping, I'm putting them here and there. I'm making sure that they go around the sides so that when it's hung on the wall, you can see that there are some shapes on the sides and top and bottom as well, because it's not going in a frame. It's gonna be hung exactly like this. I can just use a push pin, stick it in the drywall and hang it and it will be perfect the way it is. So I'm not, I'm not worried about the sides remaining plain or anything. I do wanna decorate them with the same decoration that's on the top. So once it's all dry, I, I'm i still a little bit puzzled by the kind of antique -y background. I wanna add a little bit of extra color to it. And so I get some of the green gold and um, some of the raw sienna and a little bit of titanium white. And I'm just adding some color here and there in some of the spaces to make it more interesting. I just, that, that red iron oxide antiquing cream, it, it wasn't dimensional enough for me, I guess. It just had that orangey red color and the white and I wanted, wanted to add more interest and depth to the piece. So that's why I'm doing this with a brush and then kind of wiping it back with a baby wipe, um, adding some different colors here and there. And then I end up adding more color over the top as well. So. It becomes quite dimensional by the time I'm done. So now I want to do shadows because I think everything looks better with shadows and you shouldn't skip this step. So I got out my Faber-Castell Pit Artist brush pins. These are India ink, which is a permanent type of ink and a brush, um, like a flexible brush tip. And then I'm blending it out with a water brush, a water tank brush that has a small synthetic brush and water in the, the uh, barrel so you can squeeze it and make have a moist brush without constantly dipping in the water. I love these water brushes. I have two different brands. This is the Arteza, which has a really nice button valve on it. 
And then I also have the Pintel ones that I you see me use a lot. I probably use this tool on ev almost every project that I do. So it's really something that I think people should invest in. They are so helpful, <laughs> so useful. So I'm using different colors of the pins. I can't tell you the exact colors. I just know that there's like a green gold and a uh, ochre and some sienna, raw sienna, and uh, then a coffee type dark, dark color, and also a teal. And I'm just using different ones and different areas, going around the outside of the shape and then blending that out in a watery way using the brush. And it just, it makes the, the shapes so much more dimensional and interesting. They're interesting. I like them. I hope you're enjoying this project. Please give it a thumbs up if you are or ask a, ask a que question or leave me a comment. I hope you're enjoying the whole Abstract August series. Everything that I've made this month so far has been abstract uh, pretty much. <laughs> and I'm enjoying it immensely. This is something that I really wanted to do. So it's a lot of fun for me. I know a lot of other people are participating and they're posting their art in the group. If you'd like to join the group, there'll be a link below the video and you can all, um, ask to join. Just make sure that you answer the questions. You will not be accepted in the group if you don't answer the questions because robots can't answer questions and that's the reason that they're there. We don't want any, any robots. We want um, kind people who are willing to share and answer questions and, you know, be there, be present. So I've, I'm even doing the shadows on the sides, making sure everything has it all the way around because it's a complete piece when you look at the sides. And just about done with my shadows, just looking and making sure that I'm happy with everything that's there, adding a little bit here and there. If I think there's a spot that needs it or I've missed something, I think there are four different size hexagons. There's only one of the largest one, and then there's uh, multiples of the next three sizes smaller. And I think it looks cool. I, I am enjoying this piece. It, that one section right there that I just highlighted, I think is really cool. And you'll see it in the close-ups. It's, it's where there's handmade paper that has kind of a a fern shape and then it's got that dark piece with the the extra teal inclusions it's just really cool <laughs> spot right there is really cool okay so now I have out some glazing stuff and this is from um, Aldadine in in France and it's brought to us by Seth Apter who is a New York mixed-media artist popular and famous guy and they're glazes. They're called eye zinc ice, and so they're translucent. There's no, there's no ones in glazing that is not at least semi, if not fully transparent. And I've got the iced tea color. I've got the coffee color, and then I used a little bit of the blue ocean, which is like a teal. And then after the live stream was over, and you'll see this in a minute. I came back and added highlights using the copper glaze. Um, that happened after the camera turned off, but I, I filmed it on the secondary camera that you're watching. So um, if you were at the live stream, you missed the highlights, but it really makes a difference. It makes these things almost look like they're dimensional. The hexagons look like maybe you could touch them and they would be dimensional even though they're flat. And the copper glaze shines in the light, so it's pretty. And I was I was making I was putting most of the glazing on the right hand side and making that side more dense and and dark, and then lightening to the the left hand side was my intention. So here I am putting on the copper. So remember, thumbs up, comment, question, pin this on Pinterest, share it with your friends. Um, yeah. That's all great. Just about done. There will be close-ups at the end. There's links below the video in the show more where you click the show more so that it, it opens it up. And I'm really happy with this piece. 
I think it's pretty cool. This is the the only mixed media canvas that I've made this month in the abstracts, but I should make more. I should make a triptych of these small ones and hang them on the wall. I don't know. That might be what I do. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.